Okay, here's lesson two. Um, title is Properties of Dilation. So in lesson one, we looked at the definition of a dilation and we saw that there was a center for a dilation. And in this diagram that we're gonna be working on in a minute, the center of dilation is going to be O. And the other thing we need to, um, to determine for a, for a dilation is the scale factor. So we'll have a scale factor and we're calling that R. And the scale factor tells us how much we're either going to push these points away from the center of rotation or pull them towards the center of rotation. So a scale factor greater than one um, is going to pull push points away from the center of rotation. Whereas a scale factor that's a fraction between zero and one is going to pull points toward closer to the center of rotation. Okay, so what we wanna look at though is properties of dilation. So we wanna know what happens to a line when it gets dilated, what happens to a ray or an angle or a segment when it gets dilated. And we're gonna find out that dilations map lines to lines, rays to rays, segments to segments, and angles to angles of the same measure, okay? Won't be true that the segments will be the same measure, but the angles will be the same measure. And that's gonna result, we're gonna find out um, after several of these lessons, we're gonna find out that that's gonna result in similar figures. Okay, so for this lesson, you're going to need a compass. We handed out this type of compass in class, but if you have the traditional type of compass that you know, kind of opens up and has a pencil in it, you can use that. Um, any type of compass will work, but I'll demonstrate um, how to use these to do this activity. You'll also need a protractor later, and so um, get that out, and then a straight edge. So I'll, I'll be using my, my compass as a straight edge, but you can use a ruler or whatever you have. All right, so we're, we are going to, in this first example, we are gonna use O as a center of rotation. We're gonna use a scale factor of R equals two. So this will be pushing these points away from the center of rotation. And remember that the points are going to lie on a ray that comes out from the center of rotation through the points. So we're gonna draw those rays now. So there's one. And then we'll draw ray OQ, like so. Um, just for fun, I'm gonna have you pick another point on this line. Um, let's call it R. And you can put it anywhere you want. You can put it outside, you can put it inside. And we'll also connect, connect that with array. Okay. All right. So now we're ready to dilate by a, by a scale factor of two. And so when we have a, a scale factor that's a whole number, we can actually use our compass to do the dilation. So there's some moving parts on this compass. You're always going to, from, you'll see crosshairs in this section here, and you can hold your finger right here and move the compass around. So your pencil goes in this hole or this hole, whichever one you've measured for. And you can draw arcs, circles, whatever. You can mark um, lengths of segments. So I'm going to dilate this um, point Q. And so what I'm going to do is line my compass up here, loosen this dial here. So if you loosen the dial, then, then this will move freely. And if I tighten it down, then it's it's stuck. It won't move, and that allows me to, to draw with the compass. So I'm gonna loosen it up, and what I'm gonna do is, see the, this hole that's right here in the compass, I can put my pencil in. So that hole is going to line up with the point, the place that I wanna measure, okay? And so what I'm, what I'm doing right now is I'm measuring the distance from O, which is in my crosshairs, to Q. And I can see that it's about right there. Once I get it in, let me do it where I can see it. 
Then I'm going to tighten my compass down. So I've got it set. And I'm going to check, check that it's set by holding holding the this centerpiece right here. I'm going to put my pencil in and draw an arc here. And if I hit Q, I'm right on. Okay, so I'm pretty close. Um, so now I'm going to, since I'm doing a scale factor of two, I want to go twice as far out on this ray. So in order to do that, I've got my compass set for that distance from O to Q. So now I'm going to put the crosshairs right on point Q, hold it down, and mark, put my pencil in, and get that little mark there for, now this is going to be the dilated point Q, or Q prime. Okay, so I can do the same thing over here for P. It's a different distance from Q, so I'm going to have to adjust my compass. Um, get the crosshairs right here on O, right in here. We're up here. Um, and then I'm going to adjust this until it lines up. And then I'll tighten it down right there. Okay, that's pretty tight. Okay, so let's double check and make sure I'm on my point. Helps to have a sharp pencil for this. Um, okay, so I am. My compass made a mark right there. So now I can, oh, it moved. I didn't tighten it down. Okay, so let's get it on there. Turn it the correct way to tighten it. Okay. <laughs> These can be a little frustrating. So um, you probably won't have near as much trouble as I'm having while I make the video, though. Um, all right. Okay, I think I've got that tightened down now. So let's check our point P, um, make our mark, holding it here, moving it. Um, it's pretty close. Okay, so I'm going to come back up here to P and mark off another length for P. So this distance, this and this will be, this point here where they intersect is the dilation of P or P prime. So we've got O to P and P and O to P prime being twice as far away. And same thing with Q. So we can connect P and Q. Okay, so we want to verify that this is going to be a line. So let's try one more point because if this point R prime ends up right here, we know that you can that if I have three lines, three points then for sure I've got they're going to be collinear or on the same line. So we can do this with our compass again. So measuring the distance to point R, get that lined up. Get that lined up and tighten it down. Okay, let's tighten down. So let's double check, make my mark there is right on R, and then move it up and make a mark here, okay? And so that goes through there, and that's my R prime, okay? So you could try a few more. Any ray that we draw out from here should, should have the same property like that. Okay, so if you think about this, um, any point I pick to dilate is going to not be, these, these two lines are not going to have any points in common because there's no way I can dilate a point here and have it stay on this line. It will be pushed out by this scale factor of two. Therefore, that's the definition of parallel lines, and we'll see more about that in later lessons. Let's call this line L and this line L prime. So we're going to see that L and L prime are not only both lines, but they're parallel lines.
when we do a dilation like this. Okay, so what if we did a scale factor of r equals 3? Would that also result in another parallel line? So if I want to do a scale factor of 3, I'm going to use my compass 1, 2, 3 times. So since we already have this marked for r, let's go ahead and um, mark another um, point for r. We'll call this r double prime. So this is a dilation. Here's, here's from O, the center, out to R. And O to R double prime is three times the distance. So that would be um, a dilation with scale factor of three. So let's get one more point for that so we can draw the line. So let's, do, let's use P here. So I'm just going to loosen this a tiny bit. I think it helps if you only loosen it a little bit, and then, then you can uh, still adjust. So let's get our point P right in there, and then tighten it down. Okay, so let's double check again. That was on P. And then, so I'm gonna take this out to my P prime and get one more distance for P. And so this will be our P double prime right here and I can connect those two points and let's see how accurate I am here if they look parallel then I'm probably doing a good job here okay so there is um, this this line was with scale factor r equal 2. This one is with scale factor r equals 3 because it's 3 times as far out. So look at the point, um, and you have this on yours, of course, but we can see we could verify this for a point q double prime out here and make sure that this distance and this distance and this distance are all the same. So that would be a triple as well, right there. Okay, so that is a dilation and we've shown that if we start with a line, we started with line L, we dilate it by a scale factor of two and it came out here to L prime and then we had L double prime when we dilate it by a scale factor of three. Okay, one more thing you could notice with this, um, we notice that these lines are parallel because we said they're not gonna have any points in common with one another because the points are being dilated and um, they are lines and so they're, they're going to be parallel lines because that's the definition of parallel lines, no points in common, they'll never come together. Another way you could think about this is if you Think about the translation along one of these vectors. So think about this vector OP, and if I translate this line L up along vector OP, I would end up with this line here. And we know that translations map lines to parallel lines. So that's another, um, another kind of avenue to think about to show that these dilated lines are going to be parallel. Okay, so in this example we we had a center of rotation that was not on our line that we were dilating. Let's look at what happens when the center of rotation is on the line that we're, that we're dilating. So here we have a line L, we have points P and Q on the line, and we have a center of rotation, or I keep saying that, center of dilation on the line. Um, so we already have these rays drawn, OP and OQ here. So if you think about this, um, O P prime is going to be, let's, let's use our same um, R equals, we're gonna use a scale factor of R equals two again. Um, so P prime is going to be out here somewhere. So let's see if I can 
use my compass again to figure out where this is going to be. So I'm going to loosen it, line it up with point O and P there. Looks good. Tighten it down. Okay, so let's check. Let's check that by holding this down. Okay, there's my arc marking P. So I'm going to mark one more starting from here. So I have double the distance for that R equals 2 scale factor. So this point here would be P prime. And do the same for Q. Lining up my compass. Got to get it right in those crosshairs there. And then finding the point Q and tightening, tightening my compass down here. Okay, I think that's it. So we've got point Q. Um, so we're going to take that distance one more time for a scale factor of 2. So here would be the dilation of Q or Q prime would be this point right here. Okay, so notice if I connect P prime and Q prime this time, I notice that L prime coincides. So this is this is also L prime right here. And L prime L and L prime are the same line. So if the center of rotation is on the line, the line's not going to move. It kind of makes sense because the center, center of dilation can't move. Um, that's part of the definition of dilation, that the center stays in the same place. And um, the other points will, will move out from the center a specified distance. Okay, so that's example three. Now we're going to look at an exercise here. We are going to, and this is something we did on GeoGebra for that first um, example, is we have a triangle here and we have a center of dilation. And we're going to dilate this triangle with a, um, a scale factor of three. Okay, um, before we go on to that exercise with the triangle, I'm going to do one more example that's not, um, not in your notes. Um, here we have ray AB. Um, okay, so AB is a ray. And we're going to dilate it with a scale factor of R equal to one half. Okay, so the first one we dilated, I said when, when we have whole number dilations, you could use your compass to mark off those equal segments, um, you know, like that, the way we did. But with R equal to one half, we can, we can use a ruler to measure for our dilation. So um, I want to find out where A prime and B prime are. So I know R equal one half is going to pull my point, my original point, toward the center. And for R equals one half, it's going to be um, half the distance. So if I measure from on my drawing, you could make a similar drawing if you want to try this. Um, I have six centimeters from O to B. OB equals six. So I'm going to find um, a, a B prime in there. So the length of OB prime is going to be one half the length of OB by the definition of similarity, right? So I can go right here. Um, and see that OB is six centimeters. So the length of OB prime is equal to one half of six centimeters, which is three centimeters. Okay, that's a long way of saying take half of it. So there's my point. This would be B prime. It doesn't look like I did that very carefully. It's measuring out though. Um, okay, so I'm going to do the same thing with OA. I'll come over here and measure that distance um, is 5 centimeters. So 
the length of O A prime is going to be equal to one half times five centimeters, which is 2.5 centimeters. So we'll measure that out. Um, 2.5 centimeters is right there. So this becomes A prime. And then I can connect and find this ray. I can't see what I'm doing when I do it that way. So I'll go here. A B prime becomes this ray right here. Okay. So notice these, these look like parallel rays and they are for the same reason that the lines that we dilated were parallel lines. So I've got, um, so now I've got ray A prime, B prime. This ray is moved in the plane closer to the center of dilation, but it's still a ray. So now we've seen that, that dilations will map lines to lines and rays to rays. So now we're going to look at segments and we're going to... Okay, let's look at this exercise now. Um, sorry for all of the, if there's repetition on this video, I've had to put together some clips here and, and redo a few things. So we are going to now, we've dilated lines and we've dilated rays. Now we're going to dilate this um, triangle and technically we're going to be dilating segments here. This triangle is made up of three line segments and we're going to dilate those by a scale factor r equals three. So we're going to end up with a triangle out here. This we did something very similar to this on GeoGebra. Um, I'm going to use my compass here just as a, a ruler and a straight edge. We are going to measure the the distances between these points try to carefully measure to the tenth of a centimeter um, each of those and then dilate by a scale factor of three so let's let's look at this so i have to bring it a little closer to me here um, i'm going to look at the segment oc here and it looks to me like it is 3.5 centimeters. I'm going to draw the ray while I'm at it because um, I'm going to dilate along these rays. So let's go ahead and draw all three of those and then we'll come back and measure our segments. Okay, so B is going to be dilated along that ray and A along this one. Okay, you can do this along with the video. Um, if I move too fast, you can pause now and then. Okay, so we let's look at at AC here, and I'm try to carefully to the tenth of a centimeter measure, and it looks like it is three point five exactly. Now yours might be a little different on your copy. Um, depending on what the copy machine did to these. I printed this directly off the PDF. So um, copies can do weird things. So this one here is 3. Point, I'm going to go with 3.9 on this one. And... Um, let me look again at this one. Is it 3.5 or 2.5? Nope, 3.5. Okay, and then, yeah, this one's very different than my first one, so yours might be different than this. Um, this last one here, I'm measuring at 2.9 centimeters, 3.9 centimeters. Okay, so those are my segments. Um, OC, OB, and OA. Okay, so let's look at our, our dilation now. So um, if I want to know where C prime is out here, I'm going to have to multiply this length OC times 3. So 3 
times 3.5 is going to give me 10.5. All right, so um, I'm going to start here. Can I do 10? Yes, I can. Okay, 10.5 is going to be this point right here. Okay, so that is the dilation of C. Um, and then likewise, I'm going to do 3.9 times 3. So 3 times 4 would be 4. So this might be 3 or 9, sorry, 9.7. Okay, no, not 9.7. You're correcting me, aren't you? The answer is 9, 11.7, sorry. Just a little bit less than 12. Okay, so 11.7 I can't do with this ruler. I'm gonna have to do with a different ruler. So let's go out 11.7 centimeters. And I'm going to have to extend my ray a little bit as well. Extend this line so I can get it on there. 11.7. Um, Looks like 11.7 right there. I'm trying to do this as carefully as possible. Um, because every little bit of error that I make is going to compound. So this would be B prime. And then I need 2.9. 2.9 times 3. 3 times 3 would be 9. So this is going to be 8.7. Okay. So 8.7 centimeters here. Starting there. 8.5, 8.7, no, I don't know how careful that was. Okay, so this would be A prime. So now I can connect these segments. Segment A prime, B prime. Segment B prime, C prime. And then segment A prime, C prime. So what you're seeing here are two similar triangles. Um, here's our original triangle, ABC, and our dilation, A prime, B prime, C prime. Um, what we want to do is look at these segments. So this segment dilated to a segment over here. This one dilated to a segment over here and likewise here. So you might be noticing these look parallel, don't they? Each segment is parallel to its dilated partner. Um, and the next, um, so that's part A asks us to look, that see that segments were dilated and became new segments. And then what I wanna do now is measure the length of segments AB here and a prime b prime so if this is a true dilation these this one should be three times this one so we're going to go ahead and measure okay so i measured segment a b and i got um 1.9 centimeters then i measured um, a prime B prime and I got about 5.7 5.8 but you'll notice that 1.9 times 3 is 5.7 this is centimeters um, so these two segments even though I didn't directly multiply these by 3 now this one I did so I know that this is exactly this distance here is three times this, but this just happened as a result of what I did, right? Of going through this dilation process. So these are also 
increased by a scale factor. And if you check the lengths of um, the other segments, you'll notice the same thing. So in part C, it says um, to measure segments BC and B prime C prime, and then CA and C prime A prime. And think about what this means, okay? So what, what we should find is that this is three times this. Now, depending on how careful you were in measuring in the first place and drawing the lines, you might be, there's going to be some errors, so don't worry about that. But it should be coming out roughly three times. So let's look at this one. Um, this looks like uh, 2.9 for AC. And so this should be around 9, a little bit less than 9. And it is. It looks like it's 8.7 for um a prime, C prime. So do that on your drawing. Go ahead and pause the video. If you haven't done this exercise, do it. Your measurements will be different from mine because your copy is different from mine. Um, the copy machine resizes these things when, when we make the copies. So we don't have a lot of control over that. So um, go ahead and um, do it on your own, on your own copy. Okay, so I've, I've made some measurements and added those to my drawing. I've measured each of the segments of the original triangle and each of the segments of the dilated triangle. And remember, your triangle in your notes is slightly smaller than the one in my notes, I think. Um, and then um, I've checked to see that they are... These, these segments are dilating by the same scale factor. But let's look at, at each of these individually um, for one A, B, and C, and then we'll do D and E. So triangle ABC is made up of these segments, and we saw that the dilations are still segments. And then for part B and C, I've written in my dimensions. So segment AB in the original triangle was 1.9 centimeters. And the dilation, A prime, B prime segment was 5.7, which is exactly three times bigger. Okay, um, so what I notice is that it says think about the definition of dilation. What I notice is that my dilated segment, the length of my dilated segment is three times, um, and I have it wrong here, it's three times the original. So this should just be AB right there. This is how you catch errors on your math as you proofread it out loud, just like you do with your writing. Okay, so BC was 1.7 and B prime C prime was, was 5.2. So three times 1.7 would be 5.1. So that's pretty close to within a tenth of a centimeter, which is a millimeter. So so I can conclude that B prime C prime is three times BC, the length of BC. And same thing with CA and C prime A prime, 2.9. Three times 2.9 gives me 8.7 centimeters. So C prime A prime was three times CA. That's kind of cool because these segments were not the ones that we measured and made to be three times as long. These just came along with the dilation and were also dilated by the scale factor. Okay, so now we're going to look at what happens. So we've looked at what happens to segments. It's not a rigid motion because this, this triangle grew. It, it uh, magnified um, under the dilation with R equal 3. So, but what about the angles? Um, something different is going on with the angles. So I want you to pause the video and measure angle ABC and angle A prime, B prime, C prime, and see what you notice. And I will measure mine and we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so in part D and E of this exercise, um, part D says we're gonna be measuring angles. And part D says to measure angle ABC. So that would be this big obtuse angle right here. 
um, and this is a, b, c, and this is a prime, b prime, c prime. And so we're going to measure these angles, and I'm going to use my protractor. Um, for the big one, so I'm going to line up my crosshairs right here at the vertex of the angle. Um, so the first line of it is on zero. So I'm going to come all the way around here to my line. I can see the line from my triangle right through here. And that is at 100 and well, I measured it off camera and it was 109. No, it wasn't. It was, where is it here? Let's get it right on. There's a lot of room for error in measuring these angles. So let's see what we got. So here's 105, 106. So angle ABC is 106 degrees. So let's write that over here. Um, the measure of angle ABC whoops, is approximately, I'll put equals, 106 degrees. All right, and I want to measure, um, actually that was A prime, B prime, C prime that I measured first. Okay, so now we're going to measure ABC down here on our smaller triangle. And again, I'm going to place my compass so that my zero line is on one of the, whoops, sorry, can't see, one of the legs here. Um, and then it opens up all the way around to here. And you can see on my compass that it opens out. And notice what I've done is I've lightly drawn this line extended so that I can read it on my protractor. And when I measure it, I get, if I line it up properly, I get that 106 again. So it's 106 degrees, so let me put that on here. So the measure of angle ABC in my original triangle is 106 degrees. So what do I notice? The angle measures are equal. And I could say even more than that, the corresponding angle measures are equal. Okay, so we're going to verify that by measuring all three angles in the triangle. So we're going to measure BCA, or B prime, C prime, A prime, compare it to BCA, and then CAB and CAB. So for mine, um, I got the following data that I did write somewhere. Um, I got that the measure of angle BCA um, was equal to the measure of angle B prime C prime A prime, and that was um, BCA was 39 degrees on mine, and then the measure of angle CAB was equal to the measure of angle C prime, A prime, B prime, and that was equal to 35 degrees. 35 degrees. I kind of did a little adjusting. So my total um, angle degrees here are 106 plus 39 plus 35, which does come out exactly to 180. How nice. Um, so that's what we've got. We've got uh, the, um, the angles don't change. So it says, what does that mean in terms of dilations with respect to angles and their degrees? Um, dilations preserve angle measures. Angle measures. And that's the whole idea behind same shape, right? Same shape, different size. The segments grew, they grew, but the angles remained the same size. So I can have the same shape, but a different, but a different size, either bigger or smaller. 
Okay, so let's um, let's look at the next thing. All right, let's take a quick walk through the lesson summary. We saw that dilations map lines to lines, rays to rays, segments to segments, and that dilations map angles to angles of the same degree. Okay, so let's just take a quick um, walk here. It says use a ruler to dilate the following figure from center O over here with a scale factor of one half. So we did triangles, but this is a quadrilateral. It's exactly the same. You just need to dilate each uh, vertex of this, all the vertices, with a scale factor of one half. So it's going to pull this quadrilateral closer to center O, right? So you should see. Check your work as you go along if you're wondering if you're getting it right. This next one says to use a compass to do a dilation with a scale factor of two, okay? Not only that, they want you to do it from two different centers and then see if you can think of some rigid motions or a sequence that would map um, this polygon here or the dilated images of it onto one another. So that'll be kind of fun. That, that will go back to what we did in module two. And then let's see what else you're doing. This is the third and last problem where you have a center O, a scale factor of one fourth, and you're supposed to dilate that triangle and answer some questions about it, measuring the angles and the segments after it underwent the dilation. Okay, good luck with that. Um, I know you'll do great.